brother John is with us, John Edward. Um, we became connected with John through Tony. Tony interned with uh, John in India, um, and that would have been in 2020. And COVID hit, and Tony managed to escape the country and get home, and John came and ministered to us. But our hearts are connected with brother John. He, uh, he is um, really ministering to the unreached the remote tribal areas in India, and um, just a dear brother committed to going and obeying the call of God. Last time he was here, he really just ministered to us. He spoke to the men yesterday, ministered to us. Um, John is someone we support and we're behind. We believe in John. So I want you to just open wide your hearts to him and receive what the Lord has for us. So let's welcome John. We're going to give to him. Yep, give him a round of applause. We're going to take an offering for Brother John um, at the end. He also um, has recently written a devotional. He can talk about it if he wants. I want to encourage you to pick one of these up. It's a devotional on Ephesians, right, brother? Right. Yes, I'm anxious to read my copy. Um, John walks in a special revelation of God's love, and Ephesians is just amazing little mini book in the New Testament, in your Bible, about God's love. So um, praise the Lord. Brother, let's pray. Father, we thank you for our dear brother that although from India, we are united by the Spirit of God. And we thank you, Father, for the word that you have placed within his heart, Lord, the calling, the office, and the authority that he walks in, Lord, to advance your kingdom. And so, Father, we come hungry to hear you speak through our brother to build your kingdom, Lord. So we, we pray, Father, for your anointing that you would rest upon him and minister in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor. <clears throat> it's good to be back here again and sharing the Word of God with all of you. And thank you for opening up the pulpit uh, for me to speak to you, minister to you. It's an honor to be here. And uh, I believe definitely the Lord has a word for all of you here today. Amen. Um, the past few years, I think, uh, um, 2021, Tony and Nathaniel were there, and uh, probably you would have heard about the testimonies and what happened during that time. Um, yeah, I mean, there were a lot of challenges that they faced, uh, but I think uh, uh, in the end, you know, God worked everything around for good, and uh, so you probably would have seen the changes in Nathaniel once he came back right <laughs> dad and mom so yeah i encourage you if you ever want to uh, you know get to see missions firsthand um, some of the tribal areas some of the remote areas that we work in you're more than welcome to come right we'll work all the minute details there for you you just need to book the ticket and come over there and we'll take care of everything right I think when we go to some of these places, uh, um, you really sense, you know, firsthand when you witness these people that are there, you sense the heart of God for these people, and uh, it really changes you, transforms you, and there are so many things that God deposits during that time in you, you know, that grows out to bear fruit, and you can take it, bring it here, and I think uh, deep down inside, uh, there's a God space that only God can fill and uh, people are empty and uh, you know desperate everywhere um, just waiting for the right moment for God to speak to them touch them and transform their lives um, so thank you once again pastor and uh, yeah regarding the book uh, uh, the first copy is twenty dollars if you get more than one then it's ten dollars for the rest of the copy so um, it was something that uh, blessed me personally uh, Ephesians during my devotion time and, uh, and later God led me to write a devotional it's a long story but you'll find it in the book so <laughs> I don't want to get too much into that I just want to get into the word of God amen um, I know pastor prayed but I like to start by just reaching out to God can we all close our eyes and um, Father, just thank you for this day. Thank you 
Thank you, Father, for wherever we are, we can reach out to you and you answer us. You answer the cry of the desperate soul. You answer the cry of the hungry and the thirsty. You said in your word, Lord, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, and they will be filled. And Father, I believe you are doing something special here in the United States. You're gathering people that are hungry together. And that is resulting in a manifestation of the Spirit of God. And even if it's as it's happening in Asbury and several other places, God may it happen here and in the rest of the United States, oh God, flowing, overflowing into the rest of the world for your glory, for your name's sake. And God, I welcome the blessed presence of your spirit in this place to be manifest in a greater way that each person here will experience your touch in a greater way than they've experienced before God I pray that you will open up the depths of their heart to you God and as the word says the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were open. God, break the fountains of the great deep inside of each one of us. That the windows of heaven might be open, oh God. God, we need you. We need your touch. We need your power. We need you to manifest yourself amongst us. Just commit everything into your hands. Our thoughts, our emotions, our will and everything under the blood of Jesus. Even as I speak from your word that you will give unto us eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. I ask for the Spirit of wisdom and revelation to rest upon us in the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. Yes, can you just keep playing? I just, I'm just going to keep talking here. Dearly beloved, when we look at our generation and even the generation that is after us, probably there are three generations here, and we see how sin is rampant. You see how the enemy has been working. And sometimes when you look at situations in the natural, you think, can people really change? Have they crossed the line and gone too far? That's a question I've asked several times. In looking at the way, you know, people rebel against God and speak against God and openly justify sinful ways and lifestyles. But then on the other hand, when you get to the presence of God, you could sense that deep inside God's love is still reaching out to this generation. God's love is still reaching out to the generation after us. And we think, okay, this generation, this probably young people or children or adults, they need this and this and this. But first, as a church, dearly beloved, we need a revelation of who God is and how God wants to reveal Himself to us for us to be able to bring this generation to Christ. 
When I think about young people, I'm not too old, by the way. Right? I think in our age and in our times, we've experienced God. We've experienced the touch of God. But this generation of young people, they need to see God. They need to experience God in greater ways than we have experienced. And the reason for that is the need is great. The reason for that is the darkness is great. But I want to tell you that God is greater. God is greater. His power is greater. And His love is greater, dearly beloved. And it all starts with a supernatural hunger and thirst but by the Holy Spirit. And it cannot be manufactured in the natural. We cannot work it out in the flesh. It's an hunger and thirst that's but deep inside. And that grows over a period of time till it consumes you. John G. Lake, one of the men of God whom God used in power, he said it, he said something like this There is a law of God in the depths of the spirit. It is this. The hungry soul must be filled. There is a law of God in the depths of the spirit. It is this. The hungry soul must be filled. And as we are listening to me speaking, I just want us to think about our lives. Think where we are. To see how much of a hunger and see how much of a thirst we have for God. And I know we want revival. We want to see the Spirit move. But how much of that is a part of our everyday life? John Knox prayed like this God give me Scotland or take my life God that's a pretty serious prayer there but he prayed out of a desperation to see God move he prayed out of seeing how rampant sin was he prayed out of seeing how you know, the society was. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, it created a deep hunger and a desire to see God. And he got so desperate. It was more than a prayer. It was the cry of his heart, God. Oh God, save the people of Scotland. I know many of you are familiar with the Argentine revival. I believe it was one of the men who was instrumental in the Argentine revival was a person by the name of Carlos Anacondia. God used him powerfully to minister to hundreds and thousands of people in the revival. He said prior to the revival, he would go every day to the church and he would pray. Then one day, as he was praying, he became over, overcome with the burden of the Lord. And overcome with a burden, he just blurted this out. God, visit my nation or take my life away, God. Then he just paused a bit and he started to think on what he had just prayed. 
He had a family, he had kids, he had a successful ministry. I mean, more than a thousand people in his congregation. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> so he stopped the prayer. The next day he comes back to pray. And again, overcome by the burden of the Lord, he prays the same way. It was only a matter of time before God visited Argentina. Can I hear an amen? Somehow I believe whatever has been happening in Asbury, regardless of what people call it, what that brings out is that people, young people are hungry. Young people are desperate. Could it be this is the moment for the United States of America to be visited by God Almighty once again. Could it be? Could it be this is the moment that the saints have been praying for? They've been travailing. Many have prophesied a nameless, faceless generation rising up for the glory of God. And when I look at what's going on, I see glimpses of that. And I know we're not there yet. But could it be it could develop into something that will bomb the earth? Dearly beloved, as I'm speaking, I believe the Spirit of God is stirring your hearts. He's stirring your hearts. There's so much more to God than we've known. There's so much more to God than we've experienced. He's the great I am. The one who split the Red Sea. The one who brought fire from heaven. The one who walked on water. He's able to do it again. He's able to do it again. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it just takes a group of hungry people. A group of hungry people. <laughs> group of hungry people a group of hungry people a group of people who are desperate for God they're not hungry for anything else they just want God and God alone that's the only thing that they want I know you're familiar with the Wales Revival. Even Roberts and a group of young people, they got down to pray and this was their prayer. God, bend us. Send revival, God. They had no agenda. They had no hidden motives. The only thing they wanted was God. Visit Wales, God. Dearly beloved, it's not complicated to see a move of the Spirit. It's not difficult to see God move if we can approach God in God's ways. It's so easy to experience Him. If we can approach God in the ways He's established for us to approach Him, it's easy to see His power. And one of those ways is hunger and thirst. And I'll just, we're just going to pause here for a moment here. Can we just place our hands in our stomach if you don't mind? Yes. Because out of your belly, right, shall flow rivers of living waters. Amen. 
Father, I thank you for this wonderful church. I thank you for these wonderful people. God, even as they've been hungering for you and thirsting for you, God, I pray that you will reach out into their depths and increase, increase that desire for you. Increase that hunger for you, God. Increase that desperation for you. Oh yes, I can sense the Spirit of God working in the depths of our being. Jesus. Jesus. Let a holy fire let a holy fire, let a holy fire, holy fire be burnt on the depths of our being to see you, to behold you, to see your mighty works. And as the writer says, Oh God, that you will rend the heavens and come down. That you will rend the heavens and come down. God, even now in this place, I ask that you will rend the heavens. Rend the heavens, God. Jesus, I know many of you are listening to what I'm saying, but can we just reach out to God from where we are? Just forget about me here for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As, as parents are just reaching out to God, young children, young people here, I just want you to put your hands on them if you can. Lay, lay your hands on your children and start praying for them. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, oh God, that they will know you in ways greater than we've known you Lord they'll have understanding greater than we have had before Lord that they have mighty visitations of your spirit reveal to them yourself through your word through dreams and visions even now God we pray and for those watching, that you will come upon them in power, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray for this great nation. This nation that's been a blessing to many nations of the world. And Lord, I want to stand with the people here. God, this nation is in need of you, God. This nation is in need of a visitation from you, God. A visitation of you, Spirit, God. When you break the barriers, God, when you break the hindrances that are there, Move amongst us, Lord. Move in this nation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You want to hear the word of the Lord? 
It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Can we just clap to the Lord? Our young people, our young people are going to rise. The Spirit's saying it's going to happen. How does this hunger look like? It's a desire greater than any other desire. It's a desire greater than any other. You take the example of Moses in Scripture. He's a person who's experienced God like no one has ever done in that generation or till then. He saw and witnessed God in the burning bush as the great I am. And he's seen miracles like no other person has ever seen. Splitting of the Red Sea. Water turned sweet. Then we come to Mount Sinai. That passage is in Exodus 33. And here you have Moses communing with God and talking with God. And God talking back to Moses. And Moses is like, God. Okay, I'm giving you the amplified version of it, right? Okay. (laughs) We don't want the manna as much as we want you, God. We don't want the promised land as much as we want you, God. It's your presence that separates us from the rest of the people. If your presence doesn't go with us, we're not leaving this place, God. God says, my presence shall go with you. Immediately in verse 18, look at what Moses says. Can we have verse 18 there? Exodus 33, verse 18. And Moses said, Please, I beseech you, O Lord, show me your glory. Oh, Lord, show me your glory, God. Here's a person who'd experienced God like no other person had ever done. But his heart's cry was, oh, God, I need more of you, God. Yes, I've seen you in the burning bush. Yes, I've seen your miracles. I've seen you split the Red Sea. I've seen you bring manna from heaven I've seen it all but God there's more to you God show me your glory God God said Moses nobody's seen my face and ever lived but here's what I will do I will pass before you on that mountain and so God did pass before him on that mountain In our lives is the desire for God. It's the desire to see God move greater than any other desire, dearly beloved. It's the time to examine our lives and see and allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. Is everybody here? Many times in the journey of life, including mine, you know, other desires come up. And then, you know, they start to take the first place in our lives. But if we want to see God move, and how many of us want to see God move in great power, in great manifestations, the desire for God has to be greater than any other desire. It 
Secondly, it's a longing deeper than any other. Most of us have longings inside of us, probably unfulfilled desires. But the longing to see God is a longing deeper than any other longing. David, I know we've all been blessed with David's Psalms, right? Psalms 23, such a powerful psalm. And many of the things that David wrote, he prophetically, you know, talked about the Messiah coming. But this is what David says in Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there's no water. And what is the basis of his longing? What is he longing for? Lord, to see your power and your glory. What basically David is saying is, God, I've, I've witnessed it, God. I witnessed glimpses of that power. I witnessed glimpses of that glory. Now I'm going through a dry season in my life. God, my soul longs for you. My flesh thirsts for you. Does our soul long for God? Does our flesh thirst for God? Is that longing for God coming from the depths of our hearts? I think we know Psalms 42 because it's been sung as beautiful songs as the deer panted for the waters. So my soul longs for you, O oh God. You know, I, I know we sing it as a beautiful song, but there's nothing beautiful about a deer panting for the waters. In the desert, the deer is looking for water for a couple of days. And you know, if you go to Israel, you can just, you know how the heat is over there. <laughs> and imagine being a couple of days without water in that kind of a setting. And so, after two or three days, because of the lack of water, a deep, you know, pain develops in the, you know, stomach of the deer, or the deep inside. So out of that deep pain, the deer starts to moan. It starts to groan. <laughs> And here, the sons of Korah, one of them that wrote the psalm saying, just like that, just like that, just like that, I long for you, God. Just like that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your ooing us to yourself. You're ooing us to yourself. You're calling us to come deeper. You're calling us to come higher. There's so much more in you. Eye has not seen or ear has not heard. All the things that God has prepared for His children. But God has revealed it to those who love Him. 
Church, there's so much more to Christ than what we've known. There's so much more to God than we've experienced. Allow the Spirit, allow the Spirit to work deep inside of you. When I was in Russia, I was running away from God. I was doing my medical school. But one of my friends, he was from Africa. He was very persistent. He would always find me and kept inviting me for these meetings. I kept avoiding those meetings. Then one day, you know, out of his persistence, I went to a meeting. And there God touched me by his power, healed me of my infirmity. It was almost as if somebody lit a small flame inside of me. A small flame. And many times God does that. When we're in the presence of God, God lights a small flame inside of us. But the question is, what do we do with it? Do we yield to God and allow that flame to grow? The small flame that was lit inside me said, I need to know God. I need to experience Him. I need to walk with God just like Enoch walked with God. And after that, the Spirit of God started to work in my life. He started to purify me. He started to bring me to a place of total surrender. And as I kept yielding to Him, yielding to Him, the small flame began to grow, began to grow, began to grow. Till it became a raging fire that consumed me. That consumed me. And I had only one desire at that time. God, I need you, God. God, I want you, God. This was my third year of medical school. Third year was usually, they say, it's the most difficult year. All the big books and all of that we had. But I would be up 2 a.m. in the morning, waiting on the Lord. 3 a.m. in the morning. Did God answer that cry? Oh, yes, He did. Yes, He did. He came down in power. And you know, the rest is history. People who came to my room, just entering my room, they experienced the presence and the power of God. It's not complicated. It's not complex. Get hungry. Get hungry. Get thirsty. Paul says in in Philippians chapter 3. And you know, he's this guy who's accomplished so much already when he's writing the Philippians. But you get a glimpse into you know, his desire for Christ, knowing Christ. Look at what he says in verse 8. That indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord. And he goes on to say he counts them as rubbish, right? 
basically what Paul is saying is my desire to know Christ far supersedes any other desire that every other desire is immaterial can I hear an amen and that's why Moses accomplished so many things for God that's why David did what he did that's why Paul accomplish so many things for Christ it's simply because of the continuing hunger and thirst in their lives for God and God almighty this morning when we just close our eyes and we're just going to reach out to God from wherever we are whatever circumstances we are in as the presence of god is here in this place we just ask god if we if we don't have that hunger if we don't have that thirst we can start by saying god create in me that hunger for you create in me that thirst for you god can we have john 7 37 to 39 i'm just going to give an altar call here if you speak the spirit <clears throat> is wooing you if God has touched you during this time I want you to come forward and just kneel in the presence of God thank you Lord yes yes If anyone is thirsty If anyone is thirsty let him come If anyone is thirsty let him come If anyone is thirsty let him come This is a moment of visitation This is a moment where the spirit is ministering in power. If you're thirsty, come. As Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers. Shall flow rivers. Shall flow Even now, Lord, let your rivers flow. Rivers flow. Rivers flow. For those who are seated, can we just close our eyes and just engage with the Lord? The altars are still open. Thank you, Jesus. Even as your people are reaching out, reaching out to you, God, for more of you. Even as you're stirring the depths inside of them. I know there's many of you still there. God is working deep inside of you. Just take that step forward to come into the front to the altar. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just
they let it rain. Thank you, Jesus. The altars are open. Oh, the Spirit of God is moving. 